Gene cloning is the copying of a gene in bacterial cells. It was the original method for amplifying genes. To clone a gene, you need a vector to carry it into the bacteria, which is most commonly a plasmid. This is because they have been constructed by geneticists to have three essential parts. These parts are an origin of replication, selectable markers like antibiotic resistance, and a gene with restriction sites in it that is affected by the addition of new DNA, so that we know that the plasmid has recombined DNA on it. This gene in most plasmids is the LAC-Z gene, which contains several sites where the restriction enzymes will cut. To add the new DNA to the plasmid, we cut the plasmid and the new DNA with the same restriction enzyme. We combine the new DNA and plasmid DNA and hopefully form a recombined plasmid with DNA ligase. Then, we introduce our plasmids to E. coli and grow these bacteria in media containing ampicillin, which will kill all bacteria without the plasmids. We also add a chemical called Xgal. Many plasmids will have reformed without taking on the new DNA, so we need a way to determine if bacterial colonies have recombined DNA or not. This is where the LAC-Z gene is useful. A functional LAC-Z gene will break down the Xgal and produce a blue dye in those bacterial colonies, but a colony with new DNA inserted in the middle of the LAC-Z gene won't have this capability and will appear white. These bacteria can be isolated and grown to amplify the DNA in question. For many years, the only way to amplify a gene was by gene cloning, until the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, was introduced by Kerry Mullis in 1983. PCR is a technique that allows scientists to rapidly amplify DNA. It involves creating the right conditions for DNA to replicate outside of a cell. PCR begins with a solution of a DNA sample, a pair of primers, DNA polymerase, DNTPs, or DNA building blocks, and other salts. One cycle of PCR involves three steps. First is denaturation, which breaks apart the hydrogen bonds in the DNA sample. Next is annealing, which prevents the DNA strands from reforming and allows the primers and DNA polymerase to get in place. Last is extension, which allows the DNA polymerase to synthesize strands of new DNA. Each time a cycle of PCR is completed, the DNA is doubled. Doing repeated cycles allows the amount of DNA to increase exponentially, from one molecule to 1,024 in just 10 cycles. Now, modern-day PCR has been improved by two major breakthroughs, TAC polymerase and thermocyclers. Originally, the DNA polymerases that were used from E. coli were destroyed in every cycle of PCR involving high heat. Now, scientists use a DNA polymerase called TAC polymerase, isolated from bacteria that live in the hot springs of Yellowstone, which allows them to only add DNA polymerase one time to the mixture. Secondly, scientists developed automated thermocyclers that would automatically heat the samples to 90, 60, and then 72 degrees Celsius for each step in repeated cycles. Scientists no longer had to physically move each sample from water bath to water bath. Modern day PCR is extremely important in research because it can identify the presence or absence of alleles of certain sections of DNA that identify paternity, ancestry, viral DNA, or causes of genetic diseases.